Hello everybody, this is Ricardo and I'm still playing Elite Dangerous. So you find me at Trophy Base. I've gone done a bit of engineering with um, the guy who handles all the chain guns, multi-cannons, cannons, that sort of thing. And I've upgraded the turrets on each nacelle which I've got, um, the minigun turrets. So I've upgraded them with uh, some heat modifications and some extended clips. And I managed to get a few extra abilities added to the weapon by going through the engineering process. Of course I had mined all those minerals from a previous video and all those other materials and I've gone down there and, and put them into good use. So I thought I'd go back to sow this and, and Theos and it's quite away from where I am but I reckon it'll take me about oh, about an hour but don't worry um, we'll speed up the video at that point so we can hopefully try and keep things a little bit more interesting and not so dry as a lot of things in the elite universe can be when doing the grind of trading. So we've selected CIOS and we've got our map um, plugged in and it's about 38-39 jumps away from where we are at the moment. So with that in mind let's take off and let's get going. So here we are and we're attempting now to break um, the mass lock from the planet and as we zoom round on the cutter you can still see I'm sporting the yellow paint pack uh, which is very nice, I still like it, it's a good model on, on this ship and you can see the remnants of the engineer base receding behind us um, as we get to our jump point. Now given the fact that we are going to be um, going to Cios, we've got a full tank of fuel, we've got a fuel scoop on board and I've also packed in an extra 64 ton fuel capacity in the ship, thus removing the other cargo hold that I had. So I've got about 416 tons worth of cargo. Now along the way I stopped off at this station um, just to refuel. I was doing pretty good with the fuel scoop, but um, there were some bounty hunters on my tail and I wanted to have a rest and go grab a cup of coffee as well while I was doing it in relative safety. And also I wanted to get to the destination as well. And that's half the problem I find with Elite. You know, you can't just stop off somewhere without coming out. You know, you are going to be prone to piracy or people just dropping into any point where you are. So as you can see, I've continued on my journey in the picture in picture screen. Um, which I've speeded up quite considerably to about a thousand times what it took. Now the jump range on this cutter is about 17 light years um, or light seconds or whatever they, they, they do it in. It's 17. Um, it's been upgraded by the engineers. So I had a little bit of cargo, about 60 tons of cargo. And given that, those 38 jumps didn't seem so bad considering where I was to get all the way down to the bottom to see us. So I'm approaching lad, uh, landing pad 40 now. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to see what missions that could possibly stray me off my beaten track. Um, and then I'm going to have a look at the ships, refuel, fix any damage, and then get on my way. Now, the other journey down to Seos, you can see I've started that in another picture uh, on the screen. So I've got three screens of activity going. Just something I'm trying out on the videos to make, you know, the grind less laborious, but still show anything that might have happened along the way. So, having a quick look through the missions, nothing really of any note that I think I can take anywhere else and make some serious coin. Of course, when I get down to Seos and so this, I can do some of the additional data missions, uh, make a couple of hundred thousand credits, but the real beauty of it down there, it's all completely legal. You're not subverting the game in any way. 
and what you can do is you can get some long haulage missions and get between 20 and 30 million depending on your cargo capacity to take back to the bubble and by the bubble I mean some of the core worlds so um, I'm just selling my universal um, cartographic data as well making a tidy bit of earn there as well on just scanning those ships and this ship is fitted with an advanced scanner um, a normal sensor package as you'd expect to have and also a discovery scanner this allows you to scan the systems and get additional information thus giving you additional um, credits when you sell that data and increases your rank your explorer rank so nothing really to buy either I picked up a few tens of um, I picked up a few tons of harvesting material and um, and there we have it. You can see I've been pulled out of frame shift now by a further lance who's given me a little bit of bother. When I say a little bit of bother, you know, I mean, these, these confrontations with NPCs that are master or above can be, you know, exciting. It's quite exhilarating to, to, to test out your, your ship and you can see my, my green lasers uh, my weapons embellishment pack that I've had added to my cutter um, making a nice cut through the blackness of space we're wearing this guy's shields down it is going to be a bit um, a bit dry this section as well because the further lance is much more nimbler than what the cutter is even with flight assist turned off you know you still can't get that angle especially with all the power that I've got to the shields and the weapons, well, all the power to the weapons and two pips to the systems, that keeping the shields constantly ticking over um, on a standard rate. Now I've got some chafe as well, and, and the chafe I deploy when they came in and strafe me, strafe me. So, yeah, his shields are down. We've got him down to 79% and our shields are waning. So I'm gonna try um, with my seeker missiles now and see if I can get any sort of a lock on him since I've got the upper hand at the moment of course getting a missile lock on a third lance is something of a difficult thing so I've switched back to my beam lasers to finish the job as he seems to have worn the last of my shields away here he is I do think the green the green is much better than the, the traditional colors and, and if you're a fan of the game, I think it's, it's a worthwhile investment. Of course, the weapons are not only for your ship, they're also for the Scarab. And you can also get Scarab paint packs as well as what you can see in some other videos. So this Further Lance is proving to be a worthy, worthy opponent. He is zooming around quite considerably and it's difficult to get him in my sights. But when I do, I can so unleash him down the full now. power of my death against him. Yeah, into the 40s. He's firing some missiles, but this ship is also equipped with a point defense system. As you can see by the explosions, we're making short work of the missiles that he sends against us. So that's a point defense system and chafe, but I use the chafe primarily to disrupt any sort of lock for lasers. So also the upgraded multi cannons are making um, some short work of the guy's armor. And one of the modifications I hoped I would have got was to get um, some additional armor piece. Okay, so we've now reached our first destination on our two trips. We've gone to La Lance or La Landi and we're cashing in. So up to 151 million already, an extra 7 million. That's absolutely fantastic. And we are indeed allied with that particular faction. So no other missions on this point to cash in, but only a few hops away is our final destination in this trip of long haulage. We're up to 151 million already. No other missions to take us off our stringent path.
and we can see what we can get. We can sell our crop harvesters simply because this is a harvesting world and that added weight will hopefully increase our range slightly. As we're going to another bio world, no point stocking up on any of the bio commodities that are around. So with that, we set our new destination to Ross 310. It's a couple of hops away. We'll be there in no time. We'll sell our cartographic data. 35,000 of data to sell. And we're prepared to leave. Let's turn back on our modules. Of course, we're carrying a legal cargo as well. Everything's turned on. The frame shift drive is booting up. Let's go. Of course, a nice full tank of fuel. And given our extra fuel capacity, we're going to be able to get to our destination with the minimum amount of fuel stops. So, we've got to the right altitude. Time to hit the engines and get out of here. Okay, so our first destination point is up. We're gonna make sure we get past the mass lock, power to the engines, two pips of the systems, and we're off. Now I've cut out the long laborious journey of the four or five hops, and we come back now as we're heading towards Moray Port in the Ross 310 system. Now here we're gonna be delivering the final lot of our cargo that we got from Cios and Tho, so this. And hopefully getting a nice tidy sum course we're going to head back to see us and throw that so this and cash in some of the additional data missions that I picked up prior to me leaving it's quite quiet not an awful lot in system as I would engage disengagement point and we're gonna to have to sneak into the station as we are selling as we are hauling I should say not selling or we will be selling it we are hauling illicit cargo there you go Murray port let's boost and get in there select the station now Request some docking and turn off some modules, thus making our heat signature nice and low. So hopefully we'll we'll uh, avoid some detection after coming all this way. So we're lined up. Or well, we're lining ourselves up, I should say. And using that little trick of dropping the landing gear and hitting zero to cut the engines does slow you down quite considerably. But we are paying for that now because our heat has gone up quite a bit since we're in silent running mode. So we're in through the aperture now. We can come off silent running mode and head down into the landing pad that we need. We've overshot it slightly, but not to worry. We can maneuver around quite effortlessly. There it is, number two, that's what we want. We can flip the ship. We 
and then take it down on thrusters. So this is an ag agricultural base. We'll be able to pick up things like cheap coffee, tea, grain and foodstuffs. But they'll be wanting things like um, combine harvesters, crop harvesters, agricultural medicines. And now after a little bit of adjustment. We can turn on our modules that we turned off. Adjust our landing pad and we'll be down. There you go. So into Murray Port, which is the final point of our destination. We've come all this way. Quite a distance. But I think for the 21, 22 million, it was worth it. And there's always going to be somebody in the community who says, Oh, I can do that in two trips. Well, that's fantastic. But I've done it this way. And I feel confident that I haven't subverted the game mechanics in any way either. I'm not an advocate of mission stacking. I don't think... That is particularly fair. I hope Frontier would do something about it. Um, I do think it's creating some people who go down this route, uh, giving them an unfair disadvantage with credits. So 175,000 for this. Only a small payout for that one. And then the final mission, or final missions, 120 units of bio waste, 4 million credits. Thank you very much. Here you go. Another 120 units of bio waste and 3.36 million, give or take the odd couple of credits. So that was it. Absolutely fantastic. Long hauling missions from So This and Theos back to the bubble has netted me or has made my total up to 159 million. So I managed to get out of that uh, about 20 million. So not so bad. Nice and easy. And I got some more addictive as well. So I'm going to leave you now with some combat with a few of the lands that I can't get out of the way. I've been recorded. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Um, if you've got any comments on what I'm doing wrong, nice as long as they're constructive comments, I don't mind.